OPSEC. OPSEC is a good thing. I don't know what OPSEC means. Operational security. Yeah. Oh. It means don't tell people all the things you're doing so you can still keep doing them. Loose lips sink ships. Yeah, something like that. Welcome to the Rising episode 22. So, we have another guest with us. Go ahead and introduce yourself, Miles. Um, you I'm just Miles. Did it. As I was saying. <laughs> I'm Miles. And I'm here. He was in the Navy. I was in the Navy. It's almost as bad as being in the Army. That is a fair point. So, yeah, I punched holes in the ocean for a while in a submarine. And it was really boring. To, uh, to pretend that one branch of the military is gayer than the others is just a fallacy. Not to be misconstrued with a phallic <laughs> object. <laughs> That's exactly what it is. Oh. Except for the Air Force. Nobody likes the Air Force. They're not even a look for him. This is true. Anyway, anyway, but I have found that there is... Pretty much they're all gay. <laughs> pretty much everybody in the military has an obsession with drawing penises on everything. And doing super gay things. The best time to mess with your buddies in the military, at least in the army, was when they were in the shower. Kind so, of avoided that. Yeah. Showers on submarines are small. Have decently closing doors. You have doors? Yeah. That's bullshit. You gotta keep the water out of the rest of the bathroom somehow. What uh what kind of anti gay things have they got going on in the Navy? Not a whole lot. This is a <laughs> This is the new age, man. Yeah. It's well, last I heard it was okay to be gay in today's Navy. It's okay to be gay everywhere, apparently. Well, being gay is still gay. Sounds reasonable. That sounds, that sounds right. See, Miles also has an awesome beard. I'm working on it. I don't know. <laughs> it might get there someday. It used to be able to, like, touch the middle of my forehead, but now I'm, like, stuck with just being able it's to go okay. to, like... I pretty much burn off everything that I... So... Yeah, beards are cool. Anything that sticks out past my welding mask... It that, disappears? It, yeah, it gets burned off. So that's how you trim your beard? It pretty much, and that's your... why this side's way shorter than the other side, because I'm always tilting my, tilting my head this way as I do my thing. All the sparks shower me. You know, sometime in the not-so-distant past, there's a really smart guy who invented something called the clippers. That's and stupid. they can fix that problem. That's stupid. No, we've been meaning to, like, all this week, but we've been really busy, and so Katie hasn't done it for me, and I am not... I'll screw it up, and then I'm not going to fix it, so it'll just stay even more screwed up than what nature has done to me, so, yeah. Well, you're lucky you have a wife that'll do that for you. Yeah, my wife's pretty awesome. My wife's pretty awesome, too. Speaking of your wife, Mitch, there was a story that you told us last week after we closed the, the podcast down. This is personal. You not want to tell this story? <laughs> no, I will tell this story. So, I had the little pocket constitutions that I... I ordered them, like, 12 at a time. And the last time I ordered two sets. So I had 24 of them, and I have one that I keep in, you know, in my vehicle. And then I have one that I kept at home, just waiting to replace the other one because the last two that I ordered and had went through like really fast. So, so I had another one on standby, and I was looking at it because it's on the table by the door. I was looking at it, and there was only like three of them in there, and so I was like kind of mad. What the hell? Why are there only three left in here? I don't know that my daughter was getting into them because she has one in her little day pack. She has one in her in her backpack. They said, Emily, you've been getting into these. She said, Yeah. I said, What are you? What on earth are you doing with them? You have two. Are you losing them? She says. 
she said no. I gave some to some of my teachers and I gave some to my bus driver. And I thought to myself, I'm like, wow, good job, Mitch. Once again, you're an asshole. <laughs> then I asked my wife, because it didn't account for how many were missing. I asked my wife, I'm like, have you been getting into these? She says, yeah, I've given a few of them away to people I work with. And, oh. Well, good job. It's that moment when you're angry, but yet you realize it's a good thing. People are doing the right thing, and I'm pissed. <laughs> Bullshit. It's one of those things that um, our kids, they we can tell them all day to do the right thing, but they do what you do, you know? It's, it's not going to work to just tell them. There's, there's actually a saying in Romanian that's, uh, do what the priest says, not what he does. And that's, uh, that's how it is with like your kids and stuff. They're going to do what you do and not what you say. Yep. The saying sarcastic in Romania. I didn't say that, sorry. But. Good job, Fred. Um, so, I was going to look into this, but I didn't have a chance because I came home and I showered. And then I laid down for a minute before I came. And then... We were busy just chatting, so I didn't look into it. But I, while I was at work, one of the guys had their phone plugged into the radio. And we were listening to Pandora. And they were playing some kind of ad pushing for internet regulations. Um, and saying that you could click the link to see why. And they said, Facebook. Why Facebook is supporting internet regulations. So, Wait a minute. So Facebook is in on this. Which means it's not has doesn't have anything to do with actually protecting anybody. It would have to <clears throat> have everything to do with censoring and you know, controlling information or, you know, opinion. It basically just is gonna control what people can and cannot say or post. Which is wrong. Because, especially here in America, we have it's called the freedom of speech. One of the things that, um, it's kind of interesting, the, you know the difference between like a publisher and a... Somebody's here. Oh, that's interesting. Do we oh. want to stop? Sure. I hope it heard that guy drop the F-bomb. <laughs> <laughs> then you can finally use, have use for that explicit marking. <laughs> I mark it as, yeah, I mark it as explicit just because... Tell him why you have marked why, this. Why do you mark this as explicit? Uh, <laughs> I figured at some point uh, something's going to get through. I haven't said it once during this. I was close once. And I don't say Wait. that very often. Fred? <laughs> Never. <laughs> oh, dude. You're the good influence here, Fred. Mm. I don't know. We all have our days. We're both equally rotten. Just in different ways. Fred's... He's more candid about it. I'm more in the open. I don't try to hide it. Candid means in the open. Thanks, Fred. Candid camera. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more candid. What? <laughs> Fred is incognito. My, my day starts at freaking 3.30. Leave me alone. Remember? OPSEC. Fred has OPSEC about his rottenness. <laughs> Candid camera. Good lord, I'm retarded. I'm said tired. it, not me. I'm tired. I'm hungry. I got more nuts. <laughs> I can give you more nuts if you need more nuts. No, I'm good. Some seeds? No, I'm gonna make me sick. I'll set. <laughs> We're talking about the Facebook censored. Internet uh, regulations regulation. and Facebook. Facebook was all about it apparently and I really wasn't ready I wanted to look into it and see kind of what they were saying and what was going on but I didn't so are you familiar with like the difference between a uh, and I'm gonna say the word wrong because I don't remember the terminology <laughs> but basically you've got like a publisher and you've got a uh, distributor still going so um, there's there's two different things there's there's um, someone who publishes, and you're like a newspaper, and there's mm -hmm. someone who distributes, like your, your phone company, right? Mm -hmm. Facebook is um, legally, uh, a lot of these, these uh, Silicon Valley um, companies are considered 
um, distributors, like your new, they, they, uh, they fall under the same category as like your, your telecommunications. Your, your phone company will get in trouble if they don't allow you to use your phone if you say words that they don't like. Your phone company will get in trouble for that because that's suppressing your ability to communicate. But if you go to the newspaper and try and print something, they can choose what you print or not because that's because that's their they're a publisher it's a little bit different um, and so that's w the, one of the big problems that we have right now is and I don't know if this is what that ad was in relation to but it's a problem that um, it's really sad to see you have like uh, Ted Cruz and Mike Lee they they stuck it to the big tech which they didn't do anything they basically <laughs> uh, said okay keep keep advertising keep uh, what do you call it donating to our causes which every, every they, they donate to every the these big tech companies donate to everybody and so nobody wants to make them upset it's called leverage yeah well the australia just passed a, you like know, what captain jack sparrow leverages the door off the cell oh no what's his name did it legolas did it <laughs> yes <laughs> Anyways, Australia just recently in the last month or so passed a, passed a law. They, they proposed a law. I don't know if it got passed or not. I don't remember the details. Do you guys know about this? No. No. So they passed, I don't care they, about other countries. Well, this, is, this has significance. Um, they passed a law saying that, these, that Facebook couldn't um, display stuff. They couldn't store and display content that was from like their news companies or from like Australian companies. So when the Australian people would try to post a news article on Facebook, Facebook was going to get charged for storing the content of that article. And so Facebook was like, okay, we're just not going to let you... And, and, and when the Australian people tried to share news articles, the, uh, Facebook didn't let them. They would reject it and said, oh, your post was not valid. Uh, Does was not meet community standards. Something yeah, to that effect, yeah. yeah. And basically, at last I heard, Australia um, capitulated and they said... And so the Australian news companies and Facebook are having a... a a private agreement and the government's getting out of it but but Facebook one one of the, a lot of our big tech companies that are here in the states they're being used around the world and they're like they um, they're, they're really uh, give, making problems for the United States as well they're getting people to hate uh, it, it, face any of these big tech companies that get into the European courts and stuff they're their Google got charged billions of dollars this last year or something like that because of because of their unfair practices because what they're doing is they're 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 using their platforms in ways that are not fair to the consumers but here in the states under the name of like free speech and stuff like that there people are saying oh it's 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 okay it's like because it's it's us it's okay but it's screwing us over as the people over as well and so it's like there's 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 things that are going on where a lot of these big tech industries are um, are one that I was just reading about earlier today was um, the, the, the Chromium browsers. Do you know what a, you know what Chromium is? Of a, out of Do you know what Chrome is? The yes. the, the browser. Google Chrome. Oh, yeah, yes. Google yes. Chrome. Yeah. There are things called Chromium browsers. What Google did is they I made know the it, internets. They made it so that um, anybody can fork any anybody can use that um, that that base start point. They made it so anybody can use it and make their own browser with, the, with with all the stuff that Google's put together already. Well, Google still keeps the rights to the the Play Store, with the the, the Web Store, which means that any private parties that have put in um, plugins and stuff like that, Google has control over letting other people use those. And so, um, they're they're purposely making some of their stuff available in the name of like oh it's open and it's free and they're be making it giving a facade that they're the good guy that they're making things good for everybody but what it does is it gets everybody on the product and then then they can then they still have control over the core thing of what people need and so they did this with android a couple years back um, they they opened up android as android was considered the open source platform um, it, it's not like then 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 google created the play store and and now to have uh, to sell a device that has the play store on it it's going to it, it, you have to play by google's rules you have to do exactly what google wants you to do which you know you, it, it kind of makes sense like oh that sounds good but the, the market is or the, the model is get people to use your product make it good and then take away the things that change the um, rules th then change the rules move the goalposts move the goalposts exactly and so that's that's what that's what the game is always being played and and the only way that that works is if people consent if people work uh people allow it to, 
like if they buy into the free stuff. And so we're, the market, the people have gotten used to getting things for free on the internet, but it's not free, and they don't realize that the cost is going to come. And so that's that's any any time your your emails, your um, anything that you do on the internet that's free, there is going to be a cost at some point, and that's what people don't realize. And the, and the 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 that's really, I don't know. I'm kind of ranting. I'm sorry. Nothing is ever free. Yeah. So no such thing as a free meal. Ever. Um, yeah, so basically, what I was getting at is just that if Facebook is in support of internet regulations, which they have become far bigger and far more powerful than they should, they are a monopoly with, with undue influence. I mean, they're just going to turn the internet into what they want the internet to be. And as long as they keep lining politicians' pockets, it will never change. And, and here's the thing that I was getting at, though. The only reason this works is because we as people want this stuff for free. We want their product. Everybody wants something for free. Exactly. And so that's, that's the, the, the psychological aspect of it, is like, if you're getting something for free, realize that there, there's a saying, if you're not paying for the product, then you are the product. And it's it's oh, not man. exactly true, but there's, there's you're a tool. Me? Everybody is. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Long story short, it's not good like, at all. No. Facebook can shove it. Facebook kicked me off of my own page. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook. Um, you have a backup account? Not my. Block or restrict your account, they just made you no longer an admin. Yeah, no, they kicked me completely out. Did they? Kick out? I created the page and everything for Elders Rising, mm -hmm. and so you know, I was an admin. Then I invited Fred, made him an admin, and then I got in there to do something the other night. It said join group. I'm like, what the hell do you mean join group? I am the group. <laughs> <laughs> because, well, nobody ever shares anything. I'm never on Facebook. I'm I'm terrible at this part. Anyway, <laughs> so um, so I text Fred. I'm like, hey, uh, I got completely booted out of the Elders Rising page on Facebook. Would you uh, ex uh accept me back in? <laughs> Make me a moderator so I can kick people out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's what, how I said it to you, but <laughs> you had your an interesting head. place. I don't if know you, how to. If you run them. a page or something like that, having a backup profile that's in just for that purpose is is a good plan. Even yeah. if you're running like a business account or something on there. Yeah, I had a, I have an aunt who um, she her her husband's a. Vietnam vet, but she posted some like um, it was like a Fourth of July thing, and it wasn't like controversial, oh, but it was like God bless America, you know. And she got banned from Facebook for like 24 hours, and she was like, "What?" Just, God like, bless America. And screw Facebook. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't been kicked off. You don't matter enough. You don't meet the algorithms no, that's the criteria. Other, other people, other people say a lot less than I do, <laughs> or whatever. But I know people getting kicked, booted left and right, suspended, going to Facebook jail, all this other shit. Like, post anything that I don't post. Well, one of them was talking about nuking Arabs. You did? No, I didn't. <laughs> um. Well, maybe. They have friends that care about things a lot more than uh, <laughs> like to tell people that they're being offensive. <laughs> and maybe you've weeded out those uh, people. From Anybody your, knows uh, you Facebook in real life page. knows better than to tell you. They just know you won't care. You really shouldn't say that. <laughs> I did. <laughs> you want me to apologize? No. <laughs> there are two things I'm not doing. <laughs> and both of them are giving a shit. 
the first place I met, I, I met you, well, I don't, the only the thing that introduced me to you, Miles, was that um, you being on that Elders Rising page, though. Yeah. I remember watching the first of these, and I poor bastard. <laughs> had the uh, thought to uh, inform Mitch that I thought he was doing a good thing, and that I was glad that I wasn't the only one in, in the world that... Uh, That's all Fred! That, uh, I show up. <laughs> ...was putting good things out in the world about the topics that you cover here, and so... Fast forward a few months. I don't know how long ago that was. Now I'm here. Yeah. Well, Welcome. Yeah. And I, I may, or, may or may not have some good input. We'll see. I like I like you more than Fred does. <laughs> he likes you a little uh, unhealthily. Like, like he, Why? He really likes you. <laughs> he no 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 no. He <laughs> likes you. Uh oh. <laughs> he figures that maybe things gonna come in. No, play. it's the beard. Oh, if it's anything, no. it's the beard. <laughs> My, but the biggest killer of it is the Navy. Well, you're not one of them. You're not like me. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that you did, though, is you posted a that, um, remember that... The Davy Crockett Davy story. Davy Crockett story? Oh. We read that, that on one of the streams. Fred it, cried. Shut up. <laughs> like a bitch. <laughs> it's true, but shut up. Well... <laughs> It was very touching. That particular story, I don't remember where I heard about that in the first place. But that's an important concept. It really is. That, that, it, and it goes, it, it ties in a lot with the fact that we have government representatives, not leaders or whatever you want to call them. I'm not a big fan of any of them. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of people like to call them officials. Um... I guess you could call them that. Yeah. Um, yeah. What I like, what I think of them as in my head, uh, is probably not YouTube I like appropriate. To, I like to call them bitch. We do mark this explicit. So. Yeah. Anyways. Fred does. They feel that they are people that. of import, and they are, in my opinion, or not. <laughs> um, but Davy Crockett's story about uh, what the government should and should not be doing with money has not been followed over the years, obviously. But, uh... Yeah. That's... You you shouldn't be dishing out, effectively, other people's money where it's not your business or your place. And if you really want to take care of people, then go take care of your neighbors. Not, uh, expect the government to do it for you, because then everybody just gets screwed. Well, that's, that's just the thing. <coughs> Is... You know, if the government figures, well, we have to legislate charity, or else they're just not going to do it. <clears throat> yeah. But, I mean, you look at reality, if I have more of my own money... There's a lot more good you can do in the yeah, world. Yeah, there's a lot more that I can do with and it. I don't know, I don't know. Maybe maybe this is getting a little theog theological, but when I go, when I start thinking about things like that, you're, you're forcing someone to do the quote-unquote right thing. And uh, my opinion is, if you go back to pre pre Earth life, that was exactly someone else's plan, was to force everyone to do the same or the right thing. And the glory shall be mine. Yeah. So that's how politicians do it too, though. Exactly. Yeah. There. Isn't that quite the thing? Ooh. <coughs> Spicy fire. There <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard that. That worked so good. I guess fire is spicy. Burn so good. <laughs> um, <clears throat> damn it! Now I forgot what I was going to talk about. We interrupted him. Both of us did. I said, I said, that's what politicians do. And then you said, yeah. And then, yeah. But he was like, so. And I and I felt bad that we both interrupted him. Oh, oh, sorry, Mike. Well, God, you're a douche. <laughs> that's fine. We. We'll let you guys get all your get all your opinions and stuff out. Add to the conversation. Maybe maybe I'm adding to the conversation. It's not maybe a conversation. Not. It's a discussion. It's a discussion. Okay. What's the difference? So we don't need to go down that rabbit hole. Um, <laughs> You're kidding me. I'm a welder. 
it all comes back to the concept of agency. <laughs> and agency is an important thing. Because if you're not choosing to do something that is right, you're being forced to do it, then it takes away from everyone involved. Whether that be something charitable towards your neighbor, or something that has to do with your spiritual well-being, or whatever it may be. That's basically my... I end up back there with almost every issue I start thinking about. Is that it, agency. Agency is the key to, <laughs> well, to all think, of it. You think of like your teenage... Think of teenage really kids is. and stuff, though. It's like when a lot of times kids in general, they'll... When left to their own, <laughs> they'll end up doing the right thing. But if you tell them what to do, they're going to fight you. They're going to fight you. You know what I mean? <laughs> you guys didn't we're... know me that well in high school. <laughs> I, you're a year younger than my wife, which means you, you are two years younger than me. So, no, no. Um, I don't think I knew you until after high school. You yeah. told me that you were going to join the Navy. This... Did I? Yeah. Did we have a conversation about this? Yeah. That was a long time ago, church. Mitch. That was a long time ago. But I remember it. Because we knew each other a little bit, but I don't remember how. I don't and know. Then I forgot you existed. That's fine. I do that a lot. Well, it's not the worst thing in the world to not be paid attention to sometimes. Sometimes that's how you get what you want. So nobody pays attention, so you can just go do what you want. The world's really big, and there's a lot of people in it. <coughs> so, I'm sorry. I mean... I'm not offended. I always liked you, and then you joined the Navy, and then I didn't ever well, hear from you again until, like, Facebook. Punching holes in the ocean. You don't get real good internet service underneath the ocean. Do you get internet service under the ocean? No. I was going to say, like, I... The ship does. does no. It? Yes, the ship has its own internet. The ship well, has the internet. Well, sometimes, but you have to be... Um, you have to have an antenna. It has Cipernet. Do you guys have Cipernet in the Navy? I don't know what they called it. I'm not an IT guy. I work for a software company, but I'm not an IT guy. I don't know how that happened. But, <laughs> anyways. Getting back to the agency I thing. What happened? One of the things that, um, that, but it makes me think of is like, when someone takes your money and does something good with it, you don't feel good. It's not, it doesn't feel good at all. Nope. And it's not, it, it's like, look at, that, it, it's, it's, it's a way of stroking the ego of the people who are telling people to take money. So it's like, oh, Look at how good we're doing. We're, we're taking the money, we're, we're using this money taxed from the rich and doing something to help the poor. And it's like, it's a way of making yourself feel good about without doing anything except for damage. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, the, if you want to get biblical and stuff like that, it's like calling evil good and good evil. That's what it's doing. It's in, inverting the world. I thought for a second we were going to talk about Deadpool, not the Bible. Dude, Deadpool. Fred's probably never seen Deadpool because he's a wuss. <laughs> Never. <laughs> You're probably better you off Deadpool? for that. You both Deadpools. Dude, Deadpool's <laughs> awesome. My wife hates it. <laughs> she gets on my Xbox and she'll go into the movies. She's like, why are the Deadpool movies on here? I said, well, that's a really simple explanation for that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I said, well, that would be because I bought them. <laughs> she says, these movies are terribly, are terrible. I said, terribly funny. She says, no, they're just terrible. I watched them both once. Potato, that potato. Was <laughs> but the guy falls well. into a wood chipper. It was funny. You know my favorite part of Titanic? <laughs> when the guy bounces off the propeller. We watched yes. that. We watched <laughs> was that. It with me and you? I thought it was me and we, my brother. But. We watched that at your house in high school with the girls. And the dude hits and it goes boom and he goes spinning. He spins. And I was laughing so hard. And I got in trouble. Ah, that's, so good. that's not funny. I'm like, the hell it's not. <laughs> it's hilarious. It goes Never bong and he goes, what happens is the ship tips up. Well, and, yeah. And they're in the end and he falls off and he hits the propeller and he starts spinning on the way down. I don't remember that. I mean, <laughs> that's I, the only I'm i not I entirely sure I've ever actually, like, watched that the entire show. That movie's hilarious. I don't think it's supposed to be. But it's damn funny. <laughs> well, I think that depends on your point of view on humor and I'm theatrics. I'm broken. <laughs> oh, I'm not saying that you're wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying that some people yeah, don't I think appreciate it's, I think it's supposed to be a love humor. story. Is but it? I'm not entirely sure. Oh no, there's a boat. Sounds like a thousand people dying. 
That sounds about like a love story. <laughs> Dude, it's Hollywood. Yeah. You're talking about a bunch of people who like have pedophile parties, so why why do people keep talking about how there was enough room for both of them on the piece of wood at the end? Like I keep seeing that get circulated around and I'm like Who cares? <laughs> Maybe I'm not any more of a nice person than Mitch. I laugh so hard when the guy gets the propeller, and when she says, I'll never let go, and then breaks their frozen hands apart, and instead of floating, he sinks. Just like this. And I laugh That's so hard, because she let go, and two, if he's frozen, he's not going to sink. <laughs> Physics don't exist in Hollywood, Mitch. Owen Benjamin does a really good joke about the, you know, the whole <laughs> song, Every Night in My Dreams, and, he, and no. he makes fun of it, how it's like, she, this, this, this lady, she, she's, uh, unfaithful to the person she's engaged to, and then the, it, it's celebrated on how she never lets go of this, this weekend fling thing, so she's, she's more faithful to the, the guy that she was, it's it's very very uh it's messed up. That sounds like a poor use of agency. <laughs> yep. And then and then the the sounds bad at the end of the show. <laughs> so so this this lady she ends up having this this ruby or sapphire or diamond or something. It's worth a ton of money. Are you back to Titanic? Yeah. yeah. She she it's drops a great it. Movie. The, she drops it in the ocean instead of like giving it to her family or anything like that. It's actually a pretty cool. shitty movie, but. Yeah. It, I tell, that, I tell that story all the time. <laughs> I'm sorry. I took I mean, watched that. that movie at your house and I laughed and got in trouble. It's, it's so funny. Though. You know, I always get in trouble at my parents' house all the time. <laughs> either where, either where your you mom was disappointed at me. Somebody's always disappointed in me everywhere I go. Why would you say that? I think that was funny. <laughs> That wasn't very funny. I thought it was. That depends on your <laughs> sense of humor. Some of us have to have humor to deal with the world. I say things that I think are funny all the time, and then I am informed that they are not, in <laughs> fact, funny. I'm like, well, I thought it was funny. But I guess I can see how somebody would not think it was funny. I'd be really upset, <laughs> upset that I said that. Well... Some people just need to learn to chill out. But once again, that's not my problem. I have no power to offend you. That's a choice that you make. Anyway, we're gonna. I don't know what the hell's going on today. This is weird. I was wondering, um, Miles, the, what you had mentioned that you were ex you were glad that people were talking about stuff that you also agreed with. Mm -hmm. What um, is there anything that? specific that that caught your attention um trying to think back i may or may not have problems with short term slash midterm memory lengths um well it would have been one of the first couple of podcasts and i think just the general idea that we as church members and specifically as men um, have a certain responsibility to do right things and good things and I think that church culture being what it is so this is my opinion just to make that clear that uh Nobody will hear it anyway. Church culture does not always promote that. It promotes somewhat of a putting on the front of I'm doing all the right things, checking all the right boxes, being the right person for the public to see. I told you he was the right guy to bring. And in my opinion, that is incorrect. You're challenging the status quo. Stop it. Yeah, well... I don't really care about the status the, the quo. Thing, the thing that I always hear is uh, you got to avoid the very appearance of evil. That's that's the a lot of the justification that I hear on oh making sure that you say the right things or do the right things or fit 
m fit mark the mold, the boxes. check fit the, the boxes. Yeah, is, oh, you got to avoid the appearance of evil. And I agree with that sentiment that you have to avoid the appearance of evil. I disagree with that linking with, oh, you, it's, you can't question this, you can't, you can't yeah. say these things. Well, well, it comes back to, why do you go to church every week? My wife makes me. <laughs> Before that, it was my mom. <laughs> Well, you gotta start somewhere, Mitch. <laughs> Everybody starts somewhere. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So sometimes I, I mean, you guys can obviously speak for yourselves. You're capable adult males. Well, Fred is anyway. Um, but I go to church because I recognize that I'm not a perfect person. I'm very much not, and that going there helps me along the path of becoming a better person and so if you don't welcome the people that are there to be better or because they're curious or whatever then you're just kind of a dickhead so yeah <laughs> I, I don't know how else to put it I have, like <laughs> you, you're not you, it's it's certainly i mean in the same conversation you're not being christ-like Mm -hmm. in welcoming others and and supporting them in what ways you can along their path of betterment, spiritual growth, all of the things that you can gain from associating with the church and following the teachings if you are there to improve yourself and not to judge others. So uh, on that, I am the proverbial square peg. <laughs> <laughs> I... Uh... Oh, back before last year and everything went to shit and went all crazy. I, I went to church just about every week. I haven't been since this whole thing because I'm not going to wear a mask. I don't wear a mask, but I, I don't wear a mask to church. Hell yeah. Maybe I'll try it. You should. Yeah. Anyway. Especially up here. I would go, and I go like, I would go like every week. Yeah. yeah. When I missed church, I'd miss it for like a month. <laughs> but, you know, I was usually there. I just usually sat out in the foyer and, you know, do my own thing because I don't like people in the foyer. The, the pews hurt my back. So I'd go sit in the co comfy chairs out in the foyer because I'm not stupid. <laughs> anyway, they, they run into me after sacrament meeting and, or whatever. And they're like, Mitch, it's so good to see you. What? What do you, what do you mean? Oh, well, we just haven't seen you here for a while. You're here every week. <laughs> I'm almost always here. But but my thinking is, it's like, okay, so when I do miss church for an extended period of time and come, people are like, it's so good to see you. The hell it is, you know where I live. You could stop by, you could be like, hey, Mitch, how's it going? My, num my number's in the ward directory, I know this, because people text me looking for my wife. <laughs> hey, Katie, this is so-and-so. No. <laughs> I am Mitch. I don't know why my number's not in there, or why my number's in there, and not hers. I don't know, but people it's are always probably, asking me to do release society It's probably because I think they have, I think they have like families <laughs> listed, and then they end up with whoever the. Pretty sure you could change that on your phone. I don't know how. <laughs> Hand me your phone after we're done. I'll fix it for you. No, because then I'll end up with pictures of your genitalia. <laughs> Hand me your phone. It's a risk. <laughs> Where are you going with my phone? I just have to go over here for a minute. <laughs> the reception is so much better over here. And people wonder grow why up? those of us that have spent time in the military are so protective of our <laughs> phones. Can I see your phone? There's a minute? reason for that. I need, I, need, I need to call my family. I'm just going to call my wife. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's... Uh, there's all the people who are, you know, I'm not the best example. I'm not even a very good Mormon. But, uh, you know, I believe the principles uh, of the gospel, and I know I know it's true. I actually know quite quite a bit about, about the church. A lot of people are really surprised when we talk about it. But... Uh, I don't know as much as that, but anyway, it's neither here nor there. But people like to assume because I'm not clean cut, I cuss a lot. Even at church, I cuss a lot. 
<laughs> I don't own a suit anymore. <laughs> I went, last time I went to church, I went in jeans. It was awesome. I was like, wow, this is the greatest thing ever. You know, I think I own a suit. <laughs> I don't think I've fit I, in it in probably the last I don't know where eight my, plus years. Hell yeah. I don't even have the first clue where my slacks are. Well, slacks suck. So the last time I went to church, I'm like, you know what? I want to go in my jeans. So I wore jeans and a flannel shirt, and I was the comfiest guy there. And everybody kind of looked at me like I was diseased. What the hell? <laughs> so, I don't think it was because your jeans fell. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Copenhagen ring in your shirt pocket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the thing, though. Is like, I noticed this. So I, I grew up in Southern California. And then I moved up here when I was like 14, 15, something like that. 14. I remember it perfectly. And Mitch was my first friend up here, right? But I, Poor I, unfortunate soul. <laughs> it really is unfortunate. <laughs> the statistical odds but, are like... But Mitch was out being... I mean... I was doing what He I made friends doing. with you. Yeah. And that's the thing is like... I remember it so weird because we had a big young man. We had uh, 15 we kids really or something did. like that. We had a ton. I, I in California, I had four. There was four guys that I that I would go to young men's with. You probably didn't like any of them, did you? No, we got we were like tight. Oh. We were really tight. Tight, yo. And um, came out here, and everybody hates each other. I was like, what? What is up? <laughs> like, I was like, this is so weird. Why does everybody hate each other? You remember me asking you that? Because they, they know they're, they're out that. doing things. <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Exactly. He didn't cut, oh, he didn't. I was gonna say he wasn't there. I met him on the bo bus. But, um, anyways. Oh, the school bus. Why does everybody hate each other? Yeah, I asked, like, why does everybody hate each other? Oh. And it's, it's, yeah, I came to realize that there's, like, the Mormon culture around here, and then there's the doctrine. And it's like, they're not, they're not the same. And a lot of times, the, the culture pushes people away from the doctrine. And it's really sad to see. Well, it doesn't push, didn't push me away from the doctrine. But... Well, I, some of us took a, took a hiatus. <laughs> I did, too. I didn't go to church for eight years, something like that. I didn't go to church for a long time. I talked about this in one of our first podcasts about when I came home and I was told that uh, my oh. service wasn't good enough. When are you going to go on a mission? I just got home. I did mine. That's not the same thing. You served your country. But when you're in the service of your fellow man, you're in the service of me, we just ignore that whole thing. I was really butthurt about it. But uh, anyway, neither here nor there. Well, it kind of is. Did you, did you get over it, or you just dealt with it? No, I still think they're douchebags. But I don't know that you're wrong. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm serious. Like it's, it's, we, we think that people who go to church are, have got it figured out. That's not true. That's well, not, some that's people go just for that appearance. Like, this exactly, is what, 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 what Miles is saying. Yeah, this is what I'm supposed to do, and you're a Mormon on Sunday, and then you go back to being you the rest of the week. I'm the same me on Sunday at church when I go as I am the rest of the week, with a lot less F-words, because <laughs> I don't... <laughs> and that includes both the words you're thinking about. <laughs> I'm the same person. I don't pretend to be what I'm not. And I, you know, if I haven't seen you at church for a while, I'll wave at you. If you're somebody that I like, I'll be like, man, you know what? It's really good to see. You. <laughs> but no, no, I, this is just what it is. Well, some people like to act the part and then be, do their whatever they do in secret that nobody knows about. It's like, oh, I don't know who you are. It comes back to, in my opinion, it comes back to a lot of times we like to um, think that, and sometimes it's us, ourselves, projecting onto others. Sometimes it's others trying to assume that themselves of like, oh, look at how good I am. Or We like to judge each other based off of like a ladder system. I think you're a piece of shit. I think I'm pretty awesome. Yeah, exactly. And he's pretty awesome too. <laughs> uh, I don't know where we're going with this. Like, I don't, I mean, it's fine. you're down here, I'm obviously up here. And he's like right here because he was in the Navy. Ladder system? Yeah. 
You're welcome, I think they YouTube. call it the spectrum. <laughs> no, that's for autism, like Fred. <laughs> anyway, oh, I thought you were informing us you were high on the spectrum. <laughs> Well, the, 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 the fact of the matter, though, is... Wait, 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 about that. I have a funny story to tell you. <laughs> we all have different things that we're good at and different things that we're bad at. And that's like a scripturally, that's, that's, what it, that's what it is. It's like we all have different gifts of, of the, of, from God, you know? We all have different things that we're good at and things that we're bad at. And so looking at one person saying, oh, they're so good at whatever. They, they read their scriptures or they know the scriptures or whatever. It's like, that's great for them, but it's like... They're not e complete either. We're all fallen. We're all we're all broken in some way or another. Well, along with that, like, who are you to arbitrarily decide that standard? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm just a regular Joe. Like, I'm. <laughs> there's nothing particularly special about me. So, why should I get to judge someone? And in the same line of reasoning, why does someone get to judge me? Mm -hmm. My line of judgment goes: you're a douchebag, or you're pretty all right. I mean, if I get to witness you doing something extremely stupid, I mean, it's probably going to provide me some entertainment, but it's also going to click the box that says, watch out for that guy, because... Don't let him hook up the train. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure I want to be involved there. So You put the transmission of that. You? <laughs> well... Maybe it's important to go off for a second to talk about about judgment. Because <clears throat> it's something that we all do. And it's not that we're not supposed to exercise judgment. But the type of judgment that we're not supposed to exercise is, you know, I guess speaking more of a, from an eternal perspective, because <clears throat> we look at things like, now oh, this guy's not very bright, so I may not want to do X, Y, or Z with this guy, right? If somebody's a complete moron, I'm probably not going to take them to the range, for example. <clears throat> and we exercise our judgment when it comes to election time. All the time, we're making judgments, and passing judgments on, on people for, you know, a reason. Not to say, you know, You drink coffee and you like Copenhagen, so you're going to hell. You're a terrible person. I mean, I'm not. Our place isn't to judge. What it? I don't know. I, I can. You do a better job at explaining this than well, I do. Well, it it goes it goes back to judging because someone sins differently than you. Yeah. Good job. And and That's what I the I, gets you. I will <laughs> tell you that there is not a person on this planet who is not dealing with something and just because their challenges are different than mine or yours or anything else I mean they're still a child of God and some it, are just more favorite than others it's not even that they're more favorite I'm more favorite well I'm my mom's favorite well everyone's sure, mom tells, them, tells you you're no, special never <laughs> Could you be serious? Let's try and act like professionals for one damn day. Jesus. <laughs> so. Sorry. No, you're fine. It's Fred's fault. <laughs> it is Fred's fault. <laughs> I'll take it. I'm not sure how, but we'll blame it on Fred. <laughs> it's because this entire thing was his idea. Let's see. Where are we going? I'm a hostage. Help me. Judgment is what we're talking about. And there was one thing I wanted to bring up. If you, you know, you remember what your, your the line of thought you were going down? Not particularly. My short-term memory may or may not have some minor difficulties. <laughs> Do you have lots of concussions, too? No. Oh. I don't have an excuse. I'm just dumb. <laughs> hey, I'm dumb. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, a, a lot of times, there's a few scriptures that talk about it, about judgment, right? This is why we bring Fred. And there are a few things that say... It's very good. <laughs> don't let that go to your head. There are a few things. I didn't even hear what you said. Because you're going to hell. <laughs> There are a few things where there's a few places in like the Bible um, where it talks about don't judge, you know, and it's it's fairly explicit. There are other places where it also says it, it very explicitly, judge not lest ye be judged, for with that same judgment you judge shall ye be judged. And what that means is basically, if you're going to judge someone, you're going to be judged with that same standard. Yeah. And you got to lead from the front. Yeah. When, when 
when I was little, I remember thinking like, well, if that's the case, why not just forgive everything? And and it's like that that's not necessarily you can't really I don't think you can game the system with God. That just doesn't work. <laughs> but I think that forgiving more is 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 generally a better well, idea. Let, but avoiding judgment. Sorry, the, the thing that I was succeeding at avoiding judgment is wrong in, in itself. Because we do have to make judgments. We have to make judgments to because it also says well, um, for your safety, stay away from evil. Or, yeah. You know, so it's well, you have to make a judgment in the standing up for what's right. Exactly. And um, where was I going? But to with try that? to judge somebody's in the eternal perspective, I guess, as to you're going to hell or I'm going to heaven because. Of why ever you would think that you're going to heaven? I've done a lot of shit to keep me out, so. You're not the They'll be all right. Rona. It's a good thing the wind's blowing that way. Oh, sorry, Fred. <laughs> I told you why I cough earlier. Um, back to what Fred was saying about forgiving everyone, though. Ask yourself this, and I, I mean, we don't need to go down the rabbit hole, but if you actively choose to forgive everyone, what kind of a person is that going to lead you to be? Jesus. That's the thing, it's like... So, it's not a bad plan, but in the interest of not gaming the system, but becoming the kind of person that that will lead you to be, it's probably a pretty good plan. I, the Lord, will forgive who I will forgive of you. It is required to forgive all men. Man, you two are just scriptorians. I'm not very good at that game. It's in D&C somewhere. Yeah. 94, I think. No. Probably. But that, that's the thing, though. It's like, when... I'm not a scriptorian. I, I remember... I remember... <laughs> no, scriptures. Asking, I remember asking myself, like... Because there's, there's one place where it says, If you forgive not your brother, you in you stands the greater sin. And, or your fellow man, I don't know, I don't think it's his brother, but if you forgive not others, you, in you stands the greater sin. And I remember thinking, like, if someone, like, molested a kid or something like that, and I don't forgive them, that's, I'm going to be, stand the greater sin. I, it, I, it was, it actually was a cause of conflict in my in my mind. It's like, that doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I don't that think I've got that one worked out in my brain. Yeah, I don't. The, <sighs> the only thing that I can think of that makes sense is that when we refuse to forgive others, the, the statement that we're making to God is that, the atonement of Christ was not sufficient for how we were wronged, and it's a and it's a, a, a offense against the atonement itself. And and I'm not saying that I'm not saying that oh, it's we have to naturally. Tr I think there's two very different things: forgiveness and trust are two di very different things. Well, acknowledging that someone did something horrible and forgiving them as an imperfect being are two different things. Yeah. I also think there's a difference between being wronged and somebody doing something truly horrible to you. I, I think that forgiveness is less of the... When we forgive, it doesn't mean that we mean that this person doesn't need to be judged or that, you know, I think that forgiveness we is more... We don't learn from it. I, I think that forgiveness is more, we have the desire, we do not have the desire for ill for that person. We don't want that person to suffer more, uh, not necessarily suffer more. We don't want, we don't want ill for that person. We want the best for that person, but that doesn't mean they're not going to suffer for their sins. And I don't think forgiveness includes that. I think that forgiveness is one of those things that it's like, we, we, it, it, it's akin to being truly kind, having that, that love that Christ has, where he wants the best for everyone. That's hard. Yeah. Well, not only that, we don't know what somebody's truly repented for or not. Exactly. And that's not really our business. Exactly. So, I wait, mean, you're telling me that what other people do is not my business? <laughs> Weird. Weird. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> Weird. But, uh, so, I mean, there's just... It's like me. I have plenty of shortcomings and faults. I admit them. Is it okay? No. Am I going to stop anytime soon? I should, but I probably won't. <laughs> but, uh, you know, like, like you said, you know, everybody is going through something, and it's not really your place to know what or why or how they deal with the things that they do. But... Everybody, like like you said, is fallen. 
everybody's broken in some way. And so, <coughs> I don't know. Yeah, I can't believe I'm about to say this, but sometimes you just gotta be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you want to take that statement back to a little bit what we talked about earlier. I am not a nice person. Uh, well, you love your neighbor. Yeah. You know, not because, you know, they're necessarily the person you want to be best friends with, but because you're supposed to love your neighbor and not be a dick to people. I mean, if if they're, you know, coming after you and, you know... And here's the thing. There's, there's maybe the avoidance, but here's the thing where I think it gets. Um, I think that the our intentions in the church subvert the actual good. Um, is th these ideas of loving your neighbor, of being kind, you know, of of wishing the best for others, of having that love of Christ, they're very important. And sometimes we let them overshadow the ideas of standing up for for what's right. Yeah. Absolutely. And that's where, on a political sense... Because a lot of people are bad at that. Yeah. I don't well, want to be mean. Exactly. Exactly. Well, maybe I don't you wanna... need to say, hey, that's not okay and we shouldn't be doing that. I don't want to cause problems because what, what, what do we kind of naturally do? We equate laws with morality because... Yeah. Laws should, re laws, laws should reflect morality. Well, yeah, they, they should. should. Good laws reflect morality. But they do not always. Yeah. And, you know, I hear it a lot from people in the church. Well, we're supposed to honor and obey the law. So what's the other part of that? What's so what if what's what if that law that? directly conflicts with church doctrine? <laughs> what if that law exactly. directly conflicts with what is morally correct? Exactly. And that's, and that's what I tell people. So, you know, law... <clears throat> Legality does not equate morality. You look at uh, Nazi Germany. There were a lot of things that were law, and upholding the law was the wrong thing to do. Look at our society. It's legal to kill a baby. I mean, if it's done in an abortion, but if you if somebody shoots a baby, that's different. Somehow. That's a problem. Is it? I don't understand how it works. But if it just really. saves one life, Mitch. <laughs> well, it costs yeah. that life. Uh, how, many li how many lives do you lose to save the one life? It's just like with the with the, the shutdowns. I've been talking about all week. I've been hearing the 500,000th death. Okay, that sucks. How many people have committed suicide? How many people have lost their businesses and their homes? And how many people are stuck in... At home, <clears throat> I've got to say, and people I've, are abusive. I've got to tell you. So, how much do you ruin to save a little bit? I've got a nephew who, three kids at his school committed suicide this year. Three kids. One of them was a, was a good friend of his. It doesn't and really make me want to send my kids to school. It's the thing is, we're as a society, we're allowing fear to dictate what we're doing. We're we're we're. This makes me so mad. Hold up a minute here, Fred. You're telling me that oh, we're not up. supposed to be terrified of something all the time? That's that's not how life works? Are you sure? <laughs> you know, I think that... Uh, let, let, me, let me tell you this. <laughs> We're Sorry, gonna, Fred. We're no, gonna, you're right. We're gonna that, that's the thing that makes me so mad. We're going to shift gears a little bit here. We're going to talk about <laughs> a law that was put, that was proposed in this legislative session about making it illegal to let dogs ride in the back of the truck. What? I'm glad we have the, our priorities That's set up. what I said. I'm glad we have our priorities put together. Because my, my wife sent me this link yesterday, and I looked at it, and I'm like, that is the gayest shit I have ever heard of. That is just stupid. And I, so I read the article. Wait, like, is this more local? Is this like no, national this, level? This is SLC, Salt Lake. Oh, good. In Salt Lake. Or Utah. The whole state. Other states have passed this law. Who gives a shit? That's not within the government's proper role. Do they know? 
what their job is, how they're supposed to do things, because there, yeah, there's a, there's dog some might fall there's out. some significantly bigger problems there, but well, also the, dogs aren't people. No, dogs like are dogs are wonderful things. Dogs great are, creatures. Dogs are, and Roxy. dogs are not people. They think they are. But dogs are not people. Yes. <laughs> they think they are. Well, and that's not even to discount them as, like, actual members of family. Like, dogs... Because they very much are. Yeah. However... A dog is not a Let me ask you this if you think your dog is your child. Put your actual child in the street. Put your dog in the street. When the semi-truck comes driving by and neither one of them sees it, which one are you saving? My child. <laughs> Exactly. Well, it, well, I kind of like my dog. It depends on the day. Actually. I'm going to be real sad about that dog, it's, but my kid's going to be alive. Well, it depends on the day. <laughs> my, I even if, even on the day that I'm the most mad at my child for acting just like me, <laughs> well, <here's, laughs> well, here's I'm still going to save the kid. Punishment kids have for their parents. <laughs> Act just like you. How many times did your parents say to you, I hope you have a child just like you? I said, well, I do too, because he's going to be freaking awesome. <laughs> Maybe as an adult. It's hard to deal with young ones that are just like me. Oh, uh, yeah. But, well, here's here's another, another thought to that. Will you die for your child? Yeah. Will you die for your dog? No! No! <laughs> <laughs> I told my kids there's the line <laughs> when we when we got Roxy I told her that if she were to bite or to get aggressive with our kids I told them I'm like I'll shoot her myself and they're like you're gonna shoot Roxy oh, hell yeah. you know, like I was like yeah of course I am she's like she's, if, if that's the situation yep yeah <laughs> and and they, they were like for for weeks they were like well Roxy sh 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 don't shoot her <laughs> Good I'm job, Fred. I'm not planning. You I'm terrified trying. your children. Wait a minute. Why? Why am I promising not to do something before yeah. we have to start? Exactly. <laughs> well, Roxy threw up, and I was like, "Okay, that's fine." Like, it's how back we go? Yeah. Did she go bite the shovel. you? Yeah, exactly. Go <laughs> grab the shovel. She's done. And then, and then I find out later, my, my kids. What do they do? What do they do at school? It's like my dad's gonna shoot my dog. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> that's so great. Oh, Lord Almighty. That's awesome. But yeah, the, the reason is because according to, it was either PETA or the Humane Society. It was oh, one of those good. stupid ass hippie organizations. The Over 100,000 dogs fall out of the back of trucks every year. How many of them live? Uh, I don't know. My dog fell out of my truck once. My my Parked dog in my driveway intentionally jumped out of my truck and when I was in high school. Not, that dog has not jumped out of the truck since. Mine jumped out after that too. I can't he even didn't get, get the, to jump in. He, yeah, he didn't get the picture <laughs> after he bailed out, and then there was one of those extra deep ditches on the side of the road, and he went all the way to the bottom. <laughs> Do dogs love riding in the back of trucks? Yeah. Well, yeah. Do you love, love riding in the back of the truck? Sometimes. When the old, when the older I run? get, the less I like it. <laughs> That's the truth. <laughs> I like a lot of things a lot less than I did ten years ago. Or six months ago. <laughs> but yeah, and so... Back to, the, back to the stupidity of this law. Like, how does this fall within the realm of the proper role of government? Man. And... I come to realize that most people apparently don't know what the proper role of government is. Well, yeah, we've been indoctrinated for the past 70 years. The generation that knows what the proper role is are all dying. Well, here, what did they say? The first, a first offense for being caught with your dog in the back of your truck was going to be like a Class C misdemeanor. What? I think a second offense was like jail time. Like, are you kidding me? Have a dog in the back of my truck? Yeah, that might that shit might fly down in Salt Lake, but it's not gonna work here. No. So take your hippie bullshit and get away from me. How many how many cow dogs do you know that ride on the roof? <laughs> <laughs> not not in the back of the truck, but they are on the roof barking at things as you're driving down the road. Yeah. Or on flatbeds. The well, dog's only gonna fall off the truck once. It might be the last time it falls, period. But a dog is only gonna fall off that truck once, unless it's super stupid and then I mean let's face it. Well, do you really want that dog around? My dog. Well, he survived the first one. 
Not the second one? No. I don't think he ever pulled it again on, on that high of a speed, but he definitely did it again. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things, though, that people don't realize is the way, one, one of the ways that you control a population is you make everyone a criminal and then you prosecute judiciously. Who you want. You, it, you prosecute the, the, the government as an entity, can prosecute everybody, and because everybody's guilty, they see that the one guy that is causing problems for the government getting prosecuted, and they don't want to be that guy, and because they, they know they're guilty, and and that's that's what that's what corrupt laws do is they pacify the, the masses, mm -hmm. and and which is why we need anti-corruption laws and OPSEC when it comes to government. I think we just need less laws. You're right, but we need anti-corruption laws when it comes to holding our representatives. You also accountable. need. I don't know what the right word is for it, but the things to make it so you can't write 5,000 page legislation. Ah, that reminds me. And that your own, the, the title of the legislation is the only thing that can be discussed in said legislation. Well, allegedly, and I don't know, I haven't seen it or read it, but allegedly one of the guys at work was telling me today that uh, the $1,400 stimulus checks made it through the house today. I don't know. Maybe Ooh, it was yesterday. More gun parts. <laughs> <laughs> but allegedly, the version of this that passed the House included the minimum wage hike to $15 an hour. Uh, okay, so you think that you deserve a living wage because you sweep? What was what was minimum wage before that? Well, I, I mean, I'm ignorant because I, I haven't made minimum wage since I was like 15. Did you did you do something to better your circumstances? Yeah, I learned to run a tractor and turn wrenches and weld. Holy shit! So what you're saying is, if you can acquire more than minimum skills, you can get more than minimum wage. It's a novel idea you've got there, Mitch. I think you guys are revolutionists. You think so? <laughs> well, maybe that's the wrong so, word. So, back to my initial question, though. What, what, what is minimum wage even now? I don't know. I, I think know it's seven something, which is like a lot more than. Okay, so they're gonna double minimum, minimum wage. wage. Yeah. Do I get a double my income? No, it probably won't work that way. But here's because because if I could, that'd be really cool. Because that just chopped my retirement time from like 15 to 18 years to like next month. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> But uh, <coughs> these people that are all for, you know, that, that $15 minimum wage, they are not our most motivated people in our society. Well, but they think <laughs> that they deserve everything, it's, and they're not smart enough. If you make minimum wage, and you think that you should make more money, you're dumb. Because you have either stayed at the wrong place long enough or you have no marketable skills but you're not smart enough to realize that with a minimum wage hike especially to fifteen dollars an hour every meet sparky the robot he can do your job and well, he's now cheaper not just that but what's it going to do to the price of everything that you buy well i i can tell you some uh super high second hand information like from our Snoop Dogg neighbors neighbors to the great white north because apparently that happened there. Nobody cares about Canada. Well, you can learn from their mistakes in that, guess what happened to the price of groceries? Oh, no shit. What did I say before this pod, before we started this episode? You don't care about anything but America? Because America! There is America! Only, there is only one country, and everything <laughs> else is a mistake. <laughs> well, learning from other people's mistakes has its merits, Mitchell. I've, I've no. tried to tell I've seen the people put their I've fingers in failed. electrical sockets, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure what I know the outcome is, but it may be different for me. You think? Yeah. Most people are shocked to learn that Mitch is a bad electrician. <laughs> shocked when they learn. That was <laughs> the worst, worst <laughs> joke I have ever heard. You just haven't heard enough. <laughs> do, do you know about lockout tagout procedures, Mitch? What? Lockout tagout procedures? The things that are supposed to keep you from uh, learning about why it's a bad idea? To you mean the thing that they always talk about at work? 
Yeah. The reason that I keep getting in trouble when I'm fixing something. Yeah, those ones. Yeah, oh, I know all about log out tech. <laughs> That's good. We talk about that I'm, all the time. I used to. That, Are you kidding me? At I don't a certain, like, at I don't a like certain electricity when it doesn't shock me. <laughs> at a certain point in my life, when lockout <laughs> tagout procedures may or may not have been important, but also keeping certain large pieces of machinery that go in the water operational, were, I may or may not have done some electrical work while something was running. Is the sub still with us? Yeah, my left hand took a minute to recover. <laughs> no, I take lockout tagout pretty seriously. We work with a lot of big, heavy stuff, and everything either wants to cut you, smash you, burn you, or kill you. What about electric heat? You, are, you run a welder, don't you? <laughs> Welders don't use electricity. They just get super hot. You haven't spent much time TIG welding, have you? <laughs> TIG welding makes your fingers tingle. <laughs> Buddy's <laughs> Buddy's if you do it wrong. <laughs> Funny story. So every, every December we have a shutdown. <laughs> and we fix, you know, shit that needs to be fixed, update equipment and stuff like that. Some of the new guys, like brand new to the company, so it's like their third week, they walk in and like, why are there so many red hats? Because new guys have to wear red hat, red hard hats, and the rest of us wear green hard hats because we are far superior to them. <clears throat> and always will be. Anyway. It's a new story. <laughs> I almost forgot what I was talking about. Shutdowns, lockout, because I, I sent, I you, I sent you down a rabbit hole on accident. <laughs> we, I think it's unavoidable to do that. So so tired. At some point, we all go down rabbit holes. <laughs> anyway, so the, these new guys, they're they're welding on something. I don't remember what the hell they were doing. I they think they were just learning how to weld. And I've been gone from work for like two months. So this my this shutdown is my first week back to work. And these these kids are welding on stuff and they're not doing very well because well nobody's a good welder when they first start ever I'm still not a good welder and I've been welding for half my life <laughs> I weld 10 hours a day every day I'm okay <laughs> just okay just okay <laughs> just okay yes I mean <laughs> I do structural welds and they all pass inspection so I mean they're you know they're you acceptable gotta... welds that doesn't mean they're pretty <laughs> They're okay. I mean, I pull the trigger, I do my thing, and... Anyway, shut up. <coughs> These kids are... Shut up! These kids are, are practicing welding, and they're trying to learn how to weld and stuff like that, and I walk by, and... Like I said, I've been out of work for two months, so I'm still bored. And I... <laughs> I go, oh my gosh! And I tell this kid, he's never, apparently never run a welder in his life, I said... Do you mind turning your brightness down? <laughs> uh, yeah, how do I do that? <laughs> so, so, I said, okay, go over there and adjust that knob. So it turns it all the way down. To say, okay, you see that one? Turn that one down. <laughs> and then I just laughed. <laughs> and watched from a distance as he's trying to do the thing with the MIG and it's going, stick you have to break it off <laughs> yeah then their lead man came by and said what the hell that happened to your welder this guy told me to turn down my brightness and now it won't work <laughs> so i started laughing and then <laughs> and he said that had to be mitch he's back he's back now that had that had to be him and I said, I don't know what you're talking about, <laughs> as I was laughing. Oh. Anyway. Don't you love how everybody that does dumb stuff, you just automatically call them kids? <laughs> Subconsciously? <laughs> you don't even hey, realize you're doing it? I always say that I'm a dumb kid. <laughs> I never grew up. <laughs> Growing up, that's, that's for the birds. It's overrated. No, why would I want to grow up? I love throwing things at my coworkers and calling them stupid names. Okay, shut up, shut up. One of the things I wanted to bring up, though, um, we, we were talking about earlier about how we we want to do, we want to be kind, we want to be nice, and that makes us not stand up for what's right, right? I don't interrupt your stories. <laughs> so, the thing that I wanted to point out, though, on a political sense, is 
lot of times we don't realize that there are actual political ramifications that are that are that we, we want to give every idea or ideology uh, a chance. We want to say, oh, let everybody have their own opinion. But there's objectively some ideas that are wrong, and there's ways that it, it, it's it's one of those things that we definitely need to be more bold about. In when especially when people come up with like, oh, we need to change, we need to. Uh, get a new constitution, or we need to do this, we need to do that. A lot of times people simply don't understand, and one of the things that we do is we we try to we try to sugarcoat the, our responses, and that's something that is a disservice that we do currently in our society, because because of, in the name of this, this niceness, we that's just wrong. We don't want to hurt somebody's feelings. Yeah. I don't want to offend anybody. Why? Well, why is them being offended your problem well, the, i mean <laughs> I, I could quote some certain people that i uh have a relatively large amount of respect for that will tell you that uh being offended is a choice you make not something that someone does to you exactly i, I don't i don't know the exact quote but well, i'm sure just, that came they, across the pulpit well, for like, the world to see <laughs> <laughs> people act like it, it's like some you have some sort of moral high ground being offended i'm sorry you're a puss <laughs> That's not my problem. How does it feel to be so weak that somebody's opinion or their words hurt you? You're supposed to be a grown ass man or a grown grown ass person, and what they said hurt your feelings. Give me a freaking break. Was your it, ancestors was it, must be real proud of you. Was it a personal attack on you, or were they just being honest about a situation? <laughs> Even if it was a personal attack, who cares? Hey, Mitch, you're fat. Yeah. You're ugly. That's one man's opinion. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just... Are you suggesting that there are men that don't don't agree with that? Uh... <laughs> have you seen me? <laughs> Please. I'm, like, two sandwiches away from a supermodel. A man model. Which way... No, no, Quill. You're a dude. This is a man. Uh, I'm just as muscular as he is. I don't, Are you kidding me? You're one percentage away from fat. It's on uh, yeah, it's the Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Mary Poppins, y'all. <laughs> no, it's when they find Thor, so it's in uh, the one with purple dude. <laughs> the dude that he tells he's going to blow the nutsack of the chin off his face. <laughs> Infinity War. And then he starts looking, Peter Quill starts looking around and everybody looks like, what the hell? And Drax goes, just shakes his head and goes, <laughs> oh, free it, dude. Those movies are funny. How long have you been staying there? An hour. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't like Guardians of the Galaxy, you are a dirty party. The thing that I was getting at, though, is... <laughs> <coughs> what the hell is... Keep going, Fred. I believe in you. You can do it. Oh, Try so hard. <laughs> um, we should not have done this to <laughs> The, but basically, the thing that we, we, we have to realize is there are... The, the, one of the, the, the quotes from Christ that I like very much is he tells us to be innocent as doves, but wise as serpents. And the way that I understand that is we need to realize when people are doing evil. We need to be aware of what people are doing, but not have ill intent ourselves. But you have to see it for what it is. You have to see the evil. You have to see the when you look into like communism, when you look into um, ideologies that subvert the ability of people to have agency. These mean? these things are we have to be aware of them, and we have to call them out for being no, that's a wrong ideology because it's it bad. takes away from our agency. You mean I'm not supposed to just ignore the fact that things are going out on outside of my tiny little bubble that I live in? Yes. Yes. And that's 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 that hard balance to find is like how do you how do you not how do you know what's going on without being like doom and gloom like oh the world sky is falling stay positive but also like do something about it you know read the constitution and then get other people to read the constitution 
We were supposed to go over some of the rights today, but I don't think that's going to happen. Right? Yes, Somebody yes. could stay on topic. <laughs> Wonder who that could be. I, I bet they have a beard. So, <laughs> must be one of you two. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. This is all my fault. You know, we're used to that. I bet. Then I mean, I, if you're going to be that guy that takes the blame, I mean... <laughs> you guys can continue on and talk about something worthwhile after I leave. Yeah, how soon you have to leave? There's a watch in here somewhere. Yeah, in the next few minutes. Okay. But I can go and you guys can keep doing your thing. Uh oh, well that's going to make lots of noise for your does. I know. Senor Fred. It happens all the time. If I wasn't too busy being a smart ass and interrupting everybody, I would fall asleep. <laughs> I don't sleep and then I start my day really early. Wait, do you like go to bed and then you can't sleep because your brain don't shut off? Uh, I don't sleep well. I never really have slept really well. And then I went to Iraq and then I still didn't sleep well. So. Just, I just don't. That sucks. I sleep like I'm dead. Oh. One day I'll find out. Probably the only parts of my body work. How's your foot though? It hurts. Well, sorry to hear that. If you cared at all, you would already know how it feels. Right, I don't care at all. <laughs> I only ask you because like, I know that's what a decent human being is supposed to do. <laughs> anyway. <sighs> uh, but yeah. There you go. Fairly soon, but if you guys... I bet you two could actually have a pretty good episode without me. <laughs> do you want to continue? <laughs> I'm up for whatever. Okay. I I'm don't necessarily have anywhere to really be and if you wanna if you think that's some worthwhile content to create then we can I'd like to get to know you a little bit. Well you, you actually, actually, no. I I can tell that you've got a lot of perspectives that are um, worth exploring. He's actually quite wise. And it's my fault that this whole thing's gone so south. <laughs> Dumbass. <laughs> Do you prefer Dumas? <laughs> I'm not sure that I've ever been called wise. I represent without that. follow on words. Yeah, I represent that. <laughs> well, you're so, what was the word you used? What was the word? 23 minutes, like, that's not that long. What was the word you used? Oh, you're so. Uh, Stupid? No, candid. You're very candid about it. <laughs> Mitch is a very candid person. <laughs> that is true. Oh, man, I'm retarded. <laughs> I know words. <laughs> I want to always use the right ones. I don't ever use that word. I use facetious a lot, so I know what that means. I'd have to go look that one up. I'm assuming Smart that ass. it means yeah. You know, the words that you use correctly are always so, like, surprising. <laughs> but they're also, like, dead correct. And it's like, what the hell was that? How does he... <laughs> How can he remember this? But yet... <laughs> Everything else <laughs> is just smartest retard I know. <laughs> the dumbest smart kid I know. Uh oh. What's that? It is what it is. Okay. So if you, some people got it and some people don't. What can I say? But um, the thing that we were the. The thing that we were talking about, and go ahead and get closer if you'd like. Oh yeah, I just, mostly my feet. The rest of me has enough layers, but my feet, these boots are not ideal. Sorry to... Well, thanks for coming out. The, um, but you've said a few things about how the... Um, you, you mentioned about... We've talked about the government, and cut more off, more off of this. We've talked a little bit about the role of government, both in military and in police. Um, you served... In the, you served in the Navy, you said? Yes, I was in the Navy. I was my job title, so the Army has MOSs, I don't understand that, because I never had to play that game. 
Um, I was, my job title was Submarine Navigation Electronics Technician. So my job consisted of actually driving a submarine, navigating a submarine, and fixing anything electronic that was broken and not directly owned by another division in the front half of the boat. So power plant was not my problem. The front half of the boat was my problem. So, yeah. All the atmosphere monitoring, navigation stuff, communication stuff inside the hole, not exterior to the hole. That was radio's problem. So yeah, that's what I did. One of the things that I've noticed, and I, I was never in the military, um, but I've noticed with a lot of the people that I've talked to military is a, a good chunk of them, oh, more than half of the people that I know, um, once they get out of the military, they hate the military. Mm -hmm. Or they dislike the military. And I don't know if this is true, this is just my perception, but it seems like what the military does is it takes individuals and it breaks them down from what they are and then it builds them up to be what they want them to be. And that's the whole quote, like they're, they're very focused on, on, on getting you to be something that they can predict regardless of the situation. They don't, they don't that, that autonomy of the individuality, they, very, they try very hard to get rid of that. They do. And so some of us go into the military and some of us may or may not have some problems with authority growing up. And I learned to play the game. I, I would not say that I was broken down and built back up into what they wanted. I learned to say the things that they wanted to hear and get enough of the job done that they wanted done that they left me alone. Mm -hmm. um, I think you might find the same with Mitch. I don't know. He could tell you that a whole lot better than I could. But uh, they definitely try to break you down and build you up into, into what they consider to be a good soldier, sailor, airman, whatever marine whatever they want want to call it mm -hmm. um where was i going with that but yes they so they break they break you down so to speak and then build you back up into what they want and um what i have found is that the vast majority of people who make careers out of the navy and in my mind that's you're out you can retire after 20 years whatever are the people that seem to need to be told that you need to wear black boots and you need to tie them this way and you need to wear this uniform and you need to put your belt buckle this way and you need to wear this hat in this way and that ain't me it may seem like an oversimplification but to me it seems like the people who appreciate uh, who appreciate and value that autonomy and the ability to to be yourself the people and and i think that that comes with le a level of intelligence level of like uh, just a way of thinking, not necessarily, uh, I'm not trying to, to paint one as good and one as bad, mm -hmm. but a way of thinking that, that is independent, that, that is really going to drive anybody away that is that, is that mindset. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with that because I, that's a large part of why I left. I, I had some personal, uh, I don't know what the right word is for it. I didn't like the leadership. I did not feel like they were leading. I felt like they were bossing and ordering without earning my respect or, like, I mean, because to me, if you ask me to do something that I know for a fact you are not willing to do, one, I'm not going to do a very good job, and two, I'm probably going to kind of hate you for it. <laughs> the thing that it makes me think of is, like, the military demands a sense of loyalty, and I've talked to Mitch about this a lot. Um, but there's a loyalty that you you build in your in your close knit, the people that you work with. Mm -hmm. It seems like, and the, it, you you have to be loyal to the, the purpose of what you're doing, and that's why the military strives so hard to get people to have this buy-in, have this like the gung ho spirit and attitude. But when that loyalty is not reciprocated, it's a betrayal. And someone who is naturally loyal is going to find that very, very um, repugnant. Yes, absolutely. I don't think I could have put it in better words than that. Because to me, like, so the, the guys that I worked with face-to-face, day-to-day basis, are some of the best people that I know. I, that, I mean, to me, they're effectively brothers. There's, there's probably four of them from my five years in the Navy. And 
the so-called leadership that was in the command I was at for the vast majority of my time is the reason that I would not do it again. And so it I think it, I think that highlights what you just said is like that I very much felt betrayed by the the so-called leadership because to me you lead from the front. If you don't want to do something or you're not willing to do something, then you shouldn't be telling somebody else to do it. I think that that problem though is the same problem that we have civically because we're we're loyal you have a lot of people who are patriotic they're they're loyal to our country mm -hmm. they, they have the sense of they hear the natural the national anthem and they love it they they love eagles they love the flag yeah you have this 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 true pa like patriotism and then there's this association with that and the government Yes, and so people naturally are the, the the government is pushing this patriotism, and and I think well, it, it's it's propaganda. Yeah. So so, and I'm not saying it's propaganda in the sense that all propaganda is bad. Everything is propaganda. Agree. So anyone with with an agenda is going to push propaganda for that agenda. Mm -hmm. And so, I I don't know. I guess I personally struggle with like the national anthem the pledge of allegiance like growing up that was like that that's patriotic and then i see things that are done in other parts of the world and even here in the u.s that that i that i have some real moral issues with and then you subconsciously associate those things and i i i don't know what the right answer is but i definitely have my struggles with reconciling those things or figuring well, out what's fun. right and wrong there my wife was taking my kids to school just last week and they um my kids were like look there's an eagle look there's an eagle and my wife she had she had been learning about like well she's she's going to school to do um child development and stuff like that but there was a topic that was brought up about like the abortion was um third term abortion was um, passed and it was celebrated in New York or something like that. And my kids were like, look, there's an eagle, you know, and they're like, America. And my wife's like, are you joking me? She's like, those eagles, people care more about those eagles than they do about those babies. And she, uh -huh. and she, she went off and she's like, she's like, that's, it's stupid. And, and it's, it's not that, it's not that the idea of having that pride in your country is stupid, but the, the priority is screwed up. We're, we're putting, we're, because of our sense of patriotism, we're ignoring the acts of our countrymen. And that's wrong. Yes. Absolutely. And tying into that is kind of my, I don't know, my, I don't know what the right word is for it. Like, I think there are a lot of good people in the military who are trying to good think, do good things, serve their country, better their circumstances, all that. And then there's also people who go into that and allow the propaganda for whatever agenda you want to choose every every side of every issue has an agenda the church has propaganda in their yeah. agenda as well and it's, it's not it's it, and some of it's good mm -hmm. and i i mean i'm not going to get into whether or not the church is whatever their propaganda is good bad otherwise it's just a way it's, of portraying information it's, that's what i was getting at, yes yeah. so so you're trying to both win people over to your cause so to speak and you're trying to um, reinforce that that th this is the way. Mm -hmm. You're you're um, re reaffirming the story yeah. that you portray. Uh huh. And that's like I mean that's 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 the way that we learn things. Uh huh. It is. And I think I've I've seen the the quote. I I have not done the research on it. That like in in Mein Kampf from Hitler, he's like, it effectively choose a big lie. Tell it over and over again, and eventually people will believe it. Yeah. And so, to me, that is the essence of propaganda. And then, so, if you go back to the church with that, for me, there's also something that I consider to be, I don't know, eternal truths. Or, I, I, I don't know what. It's, it, to me, it's like the building blocks of everything. That this is true and correct, and you can pick those things out. And, I don't know, you kind of go back to the Ten Commandments or just your basic morality of, you know, don't hurt people, don't take people's stuff, and have some amount of respect for everybody. Yeah. And so it all, it all ties together. That's one other thing that I've thought a lot about over the last several years is that everything now is so interconnected that 
it's it makes everything just overwhelming to try and think through and make sense of. It's it's one of those things where I was I remember I was sitting in a uh, Elder Scrum class, and this is a very uh, what do you call it? extreme? Not extreme, but it's a very uh, explicit example. That we were talking, sorry, we were talking about um, about child baptism, <laughs> and the, the the way that they had talked about it was they were trying to like, oh yeah, we don't believe in that, and I was and I and I corrected them. I said no, we claim that that's an abomination, and it didn't sit well with everybody. Because mm-hmm. that's, if you look at Moroni 8, that's exactly what it says. It says it's an abomination. Uh-huh. And where, that's when I was talking about earlier, you know, the, the innocent as doves, but yet wise as serpents. A lot of times we, sh- we, we give people the benefit of the doubt thinking that we're being nice. But the truth of the matter is that niceness is, the, is, is not a virtue. It's what allows overall things to slide in the wrong direction exactly instead of standing up right here and saying no that's not correct i'm not picking on you but this is correct this is what it is Mm -hmm. and there's it's hard to do that it's difficult to do that especially when you've grown up in a culture been conditioned to to not hurt people people's feelings not offend people the thing that also makes it hard to do that is, to me, there's also a level of hubris. There's a level of like, think of you you believing that you know the right, and it's hard to acknowledge the fact that you actually think you know the right. Mm-hmm. It's hard to say because uh, so much we say, oh, you know, we think this is going to happen, but I could see this happening. Uh-huh. We play both sides yeah. instead of having an actual opinion. We say, oh, we give a we give an inkling of an opinion. Mm-hmm. But then we say, oh, but this could happen too. It's yeah. like, no, this is what's going to happen. That's a harder thing to do because you, you're you're taking a risk with your your credibility. Uh huh. And and that's part of like when we say what is right and what's wrong, we are taking a little bit of a risk with our credibility because we're we're making a stance, but we're well, also not being cowards. You're taking responsibility for right and wrong. You're also in in standing up for something like that. Or being, living a life where you understand the things to stand up for, you're taking on a certain amount of responsibility for knowledge. And you have to have the knowledge to say, no, that's not right, this is why. And owning that responsibility, nobody wants to take on more responsibility. Responsibility tends to suck. (laughs) (laughs) And the older you get, the more you realize that. And so nobody wants to take that responsibility and i think there's a a significant portion of what we just talked about that is not wanting to take on that responsibility the thing about responsibility is so having responsibility without authority is a form of hell and when we take on responsibility we also need to have the authority of what we're saying You Mm -hmm. you need to be informed when you make a decision absolutely and and that's 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 the part that that also sucks is like oh you need to be you need to be own up to what you're you can't just you can't just oh i read it on the facebook and so that's true or oh you know you actually have to think about things you have to it requires effort on your part Uh and and that's the responsibility is like with that effort nobody has time for anything anymore we're all so busy what are you busy doing (laughs) are you busy on facebook on youtube reading a book that you enjoy but is of no real value other than your entertainment. There's nothing wrong with reading books for entertainment. There's nothing wrong with having entertainment. But are they taking away from time that you would otherwise be spending on learning to be responsible and learning how and what to stand up for? How to stand up for what's right and what you should be standing up for, what is right. That's and it's thing. all balance. Yeah. That's the thing that comes back to... So, I my personal feeling about the way that our government is run is I feel we've been in an empire for a long time. Mm-hmm. And we are um, all... we there, This empire exists with multiple nations within it that are fighting for control, right? Mm-hmm. The way that Rome... The way that Rome fell, it was through bread and spectacle. Like, they, they, they became weak because they had everything they need. Um, mm-hmm. And they they invested their time instead of becoming sh- better people. They their time was invested in spectacle, and they had enough to eat. They weren't starving. 
Uh-huh. And that's the state we're in right now. We're, we're the, the entertainment, there's nothing wrong with entertainment in itself, but if we abdicate our, our responsibility to grow and to be solid individuals and to be solid um, people and, and growing as children of God, if we're not using this life to become better, then there's the, we, we're, we have our, our priorities screwed up at some point. Absolutely. And that's, I, I don't know, my, my wife and I have had several discussions about that because, you know, you, you want your kids to grow up and be good, responsible people grow in the gospel all of those things mm-hmm. and um we've had discussions about well are we gonna try and get our kids to play sports or to do whatever activity it is you know music lessons like things that are you're good mm-hmm. but are they the things that you really need to be raising your children to be because if we're not raising a generation of strong people I think we're just setting up our, um, what's the word, posterity to fail. for failure. I, I and, think you're right. and so, I mean, it's hard to come up with the right answer. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's why so many people just kind of beat around the bush and just kind of go with the status quo. Because it's, it's the path of least resistance. Yeah, and I, I don't know what to make of it. Like, I don't want to judge people. But also, like, you have to at some point. You need to be a responsible person for yourself and your family, <laughs> and you gotta own that at some point. And it's hard. And just even not worrying about anything else going on in the world and just owning that is is a difficult thing. So. Yeah. And the thing that's also difficult is, like, it, we, we read it a few weeks ago about um, what a statesman was. And a statesman, the, the thing that it said was, and I think this was um, from, it might have been from General, Was- General Washington's final address, but a statesman is not someone who follows the popular opinion. He's someone who finds the right opinion, the, tr- the, the, the what's good, and then he helps to make that popular. Mm-hmm. And that's what we really need to do is because we've got so many people that are in the in politics. There's so many people in business. There's so many people in in the school systems in, in in every aspect of life, every facet that want to just follow, make things uh, deal with optics, make things look good to the masses. Mm-hmm. But yet, there's no moral backing in what they're doing or what they're saying. Well, yeah, there's there's there are so many things in our society that are what you would call morally bankrupt that that it's if you stop and think about it it's kind of frightening mm-hmm. and and i i mean everything starts small but how do you how do you overcome those things <laughs> and grow enough of the right opinion among people to to fight that <laughs> i think it's important to to start calling it out and and not in a and I don't I don't think it's I don't think that it's beneficial to be to condemn others in the sense that they like like you said earlier who hate people that sin differently than you but you need to call an apple an apple you need to call like a you can't you can't just say oh they have good intentions and give people the benefit of the doubt without give without also giving being holding them to the same responsibility that you hold yourself. That's one of the things that I found personally hard for me is I try to hold myself to a very high standard of responsibility, mm-hmm. but I find myself making excuses for others when it's like, oh, yeah, but they don't believe that, or oh, yeah, they don't, and, and, and I, I naturally have to push against that because that's, that's how we get where we're at. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I don't, I don't know, like, there's, there's a certain amount of everyone's on their path that's at, at a different point in their life that that you may have been on or you may be headed towards but like if you know you're right and you you're you know you're you've gone and found that right opinion then you should be helping people to understand that to help bring them along and that's hard to do cuz how do you say hey man you're you're screwing up. I want to help you. <laughs> like that's not taken well. <laughs> and I don't I don't know the right way to, to to do that. That's I mean, I'm no 
what's the word for it? I'm authority. I'm yeah, like I'm I'm just me. I'm 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 a regular guy. So what gives me the the credibility and authority to say, "Hey man, you're screwing up. Let me help you." When I understand full well that I am an imperfect person and along the path somewhere differently than they are. And that path may be parallel, it may be ahead, it may be behind. I don't know. I think that the the best way, the thing that comes to my mind is just looking at how Christ, what he did, as far as he was always inviting people, you know, come follow me, you know. Mm -hmm. But he, was, he wasn't coercive with it. He wasn't like, he would give correction when appropriate. And he would—he was—he was hard when appropriate. He whipped the tax collectors. He, you know, there he—he he told the woman at the well, like, it's not good to give the dog what the food that was meant for the children. When she came to him asking to be taught, and, and there's there's some really hard things that Jesus did that we don't that we that we gloss over. That, but Christ Christ was also he was a perfect example, and it's it's good to just kind of be good ourselves. So that when other people do need help, we can help them, but yet you can't force them to see the what you're trying to teach them. But our examples are far more impactful than any any conversation well, or any. Absolutely, it goes back to the what we were talking about earlier. I don't know if it was on camera or not. Um, your kids do what you do, not what you say. So if you want someone to respect you then you have to live a visibly respectable life and be a, res a visibly respectable person. And it's, it's not enough to just be a good person in private and go about your business. You have, to, you have to let the world see that. Which, I mean, at the core of it is kind of what this whole podcast is about, right? Is you're, you're putting it out there for the world so people can see it and find it and learn from it and then add to that knowledge. Yeah, that really is. I mean, we we both, n neither Mitch nor I, really cared to like. We don't in, we don't necessarily enjoy doing the podcast. It's not something that we like to do, but we see that there's a need for people to stand up. There's a need for people to do what's right, and, and like you said, in a visible way. And that's something that I don't know. It's it's hard to do that and not be, oh look at me, and not be oh I know I have it figured out. And and hopefully we we do a decent job at helping people realize that we're not. We don't think we've got it figured out because we're just kind of dumbasses. But we also we also do think about these things deeply. We think about these things that are that are important, and we feel like there's something pulling us to actually say it and, and do this. And I, I it comes back to Moroni where he he talks about that kindle that spark of freedom that people have, because I think that there's a lot of people out there that. While you're while you're stuck in that entertainment, that entertainment has a positive or has a negative feedback loop, where it it destroys your ability to um, to really a lot of times have that hope. A lot of time, well, I guess it depends on what people are doing. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm thinking specifically now with Facebook, the whole doom and gloom, the whole like, uh -huh. oh, the, the government's going to take your guns. Sky the sky is gonna, falling. Yeah. Well, the government's going to take your guns. The COVID's going to kill everybody. Yeah. The whatever it is, like bird flu's now in Russia. And yeah. It's it's right. going to be. It, there, there's always something that's trying to to steal your attention and 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 squash your 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 hope. Yeah. To keep you living in fear, because if you don't live in fear and you're learning good things, then the control over the outcome is not where people are trying to, like, certain people are trying to get it to. Like, the it's the adversary directing those people, yeah. obviously. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I don't know, like... The world is made up of regular people. Mm -hmm. Just because someone's in a position of perceived power doesn't mean they're not a regular human, Joe just Schmoe. like the rest of us. One of the things that I think is is really um, de detrimental to the the general sense of of good and one of the things that kills people's their hope is the this idea that oh, there's the bad boogeyman who's going to get you. Yeah. And the thing that Christ pointed out was that uh, a house divided cannot stand mm -hmm. and Christ I mean and, and Satan his house is always going to be divided because they're always trying to one up each other mm -hmm. 
they're, they're, everybody is trying to get like if you read C.S. Lewis and the Screw Tape Letters, it's really well put I out. Just started that. It's, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the 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 devil is always trying to to trick everyone, not just himself or not just you. They're trying to trick each other to get one up on each other, and it's the 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 elites that people like to think are not a unified entity after you they're more concerned about what the their their underling is doing to to screw them over than they care about you and that's just like if you just give caesar that which is caesar's pay your taxes keep the keep, keep the law relatively well don't don't conform to this the the, the ludicrous the ludicru, Ludocracy? The, 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 um, I don't know. I would just call it insanity. Insa yeah, don't conform <laughs> to the insanity, but but just keep 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 to yourself and do and stand for what's right. There's they're, they're not going to do anything to you. Mm -hmm. Well, at this point, yeah. I mean, I'm I draw a lot of similarities to like 1930s Germany mm -hmm. and. I don't think that our society is headed to that exact outcome. However, there are parallels that can be seen, and the outcome will be different, but you need to be aware of it. And That's the wisest serpents. <laughs> yeah, and and seeing that, like, I mean, I don't know, the, the, the fresh new example of it is Coca-Cola. <laughs> and their, their whiteness be less white well well why does it matter if i'm white i'm just a person just like so is a black guy so is a hispanic guy or i don't i like i my i'm baffled by the idea of racism regardless of what color it's directed at like i don't i don't, I don't understand that and i i don't I don't know if that's because while I was in the military, I don't care what color you are. There's flooding in a submarine. It needs to stop or we all die. Mm -mm. <laughs> that's kind of what our country's at right now. And, and, and what color your skin or my skin is? Okay, the wall's blue. Are you going to hate it? Mm -hmm. So his skin's white or his skin's brown. So what? What... Is he your neighbor? Is he a nice guy? Is he fun to hang out with? Is he... Does he agree with you on things that are right and wrong? Like, like, there's so much more to people than their outer appearance. I mean, I'm just That's ugly guy in his mid-30s. <laughs> I, I, but, you know... <laughs> that's not that's not who I am. That's <laughs> so. the thing that um, the the getting back to the propaganda though. There's propaganda uh, propaganda geared towards every um, grouping of people, however you group them. Absolutely. And the, specifically geared towards like the white right. The I'm, I'm talking political right. The conservatives. Uh -huh. or the, you know the the the. Silent majority, if you want to call it that, which I don't, I, I, yeah. I think that's stupid. I, yeah, okay. I don't think they're a majority. I, I, they're, <laughs> they're, yeah, the, but, but there's, there's this, there's the propaganda of, oh, everybody, everybody's after you, you know? The black community has had the propaganda of, you can never get ahead without, yeah. because these people are holding you down. And there's, there's been so much different propaganda that's all based on trying to get people to stop seeing each other for who they are. Uh huh. And it's like if you can stop seeing someone for who they are, and instead look at them as a grouping of of some other classification, if you can put them in a box in your head, you no longer try to get to know them, and you no longer care about them as an individual. Well, and that's evil. With that, so go back to talking about the election. Mm -hmm. how, how do they look at it? They look at demographics. Do they have they have the black vote, the Hispanic vote, the rural vote, the the um. Urban, whatever. Mm. I mean, you can break. Your, they your break mom, it down. Soccer mom. A hundred different yeah. ways. Yeah, the the suburban. The Amish vote. Women. Yeah, it's like it's all those groups that that you were just just describing. Those are the examples of it, and nobody's figuring out that there's the well, there's the American vote. But then you're breaking it down. Well, 
what makes somebody who lives in Mexico any less of a person than me. Nothing. They're a child of God. I'm a child of God. The the child that's born in Ghana and is going to have a horribly hard life just trying to eat. They're a child of God. Why why am I any better than them? I'm not. And I don't I I don't know how to get people to see that. One of the things I had a buddy so I've got this buddy who um he's been in he's been he's this Mexican guy. He's been in prison several times. He's um He's pretty hardcore. He was he was a drug dealer, and he was like, a, he's 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 seen a, he, a heavy life. Um, he was calling. He called me up one day, and he was like, he he wanted. He was like, I gotta talk to one of my white buddies, you know. And he's just, he's just like, he's like, Fred, gotta talk to you. I was like, what's up, man? And and he's like, I just about hit someone. I was like, like, like punch. And he's like, no, with my car. And I was like, tell me, talk to me. Like, what's going on? You know. And and he was like. Well, I was driving by, and, and I was driving by, and there was this protest, and um, there was a protest about—I don't know if it's about DACA or Black Lives Matter or something like that. Yeah. And then on the other side of the of the street, there was a guy that was holding this Trump sign, and and this guy, he's like, I wanted to run over that Trump guy because why would he be there? He was just there to cause to make them mad, and he was just there. And I, and I was just like, I was just like, man, do you know what's going on? It's like when you're in prison, what do the guards do? The guards, they encourage you, the Mexicans, to not be in the same group as the blacks, to not be in the same group as the whites. And they encourage you guys to fight, right? He's like, yeah, it's exactly right. It's like, do you know why they do that? He's like, what? And he's like, what? And, and I, I told him, he's like, they do that so that they, you're, not, you're not fighting them. You're fighting each other. Uh -huh. And I told him, that's what our government's doing to us right now. We're fighting each other. He's like, I, I don't, he's like, I, I told him. I was like, I like Trump. I voted for Trump. I don't, I don't like him that much because he's in the government. I think the government is against all of us, and 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 and, and, and we just we I, we talked about it. I was like, yeah, the government is trying to get us to divide against our countrymen, mm -hmm. and they're trying because it makes them it easier to control people exactly in smaller groups. When we're fighting each other, we don't see how they're screwing us over, mm -hmm. and that's what I was that's what I was I was pointing out to him. And he was like, dude, mind blown. He he, <laughs> he was just like, man, I'm so glad I talked to you. You know. And, <laughs> He's like, it's, it's going to be okay. Realize that guy, he's probably, if somebody's going to go and protest just to get other people pissed, they're playing into the government's game. They're playing in that same game. And it's just like, that, that's that's dividing us as, as people. Yeah. Well, and that's that's one thing that I like about at least the, the doctrine of the church, um, is that it's, it promotes that we are all as humanity children of our of our loving heavenly father mm -hmm. and that and that we're all sent down here and we all learn different things in different ways and have different experiences for various different reasons mm -hmm. but at the end of the day we're all here for the same reason to gain experience and then move on with the progression of our spiritual lives our spiritual timeline if you will time's a concept of man i don't i don't know what time becomes off of this earth <laughs> that's an interesting concept <laughs> yeah that i don't think i have the brain capacity for <laughs> yeah I, I definitely don't think god is beholden to time and so it's i don't know people are just people that's and the, the sooner truth. people figure that out and quit buying into the well this group's doing this and that group's doing that well what's your neighbor doing yeah, yeah. <laughs> what are you doing for your neighbor and and that's the thing is there's so many opportunities for us to make positive impacts in each other's lives that is not um that is not associated to religion or to the government <laughs> just be good and spread good and what you plant grows yeah Regardless of what it is, what it's, you plant grows. That is very true. Well, I very much appreciate you coming today. Yeah. No is there worries. anything you, else you got in your mind? That's that, that. I think that that covered a lot of the stuff that I was thinking. But um, I don't know. I mean, I think about all of the things with some amount of regularity. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I just. My thing over the last 
probably honestly like a year has been the importance of agency and the importance of choosing to do what's right not being coerced into doing what's right so called what's right and I don't know I guess that's that's one of my big one of my big things it all comes back to the importance of choosing to do right things because they're right and it, it both helps other people, but it also helps you grow to become the person that, you know, each of us should be striving to become. The way I see it, there was there's so many different... Um, so in the Book of Mormon, it talks about, it explicitly talks about how there are those who act and those who are acted upon. Mm-hmm. Aristotle came to a similar, you know, the, the unmoved mover, and the he, he came to a similar philosophy where it's like either you you move, you act or you act upon or things act upon you, mm-hmm. and I think that there's this eternal principle of and and it has to do with agency, and I believe that this is part of our of us being children of God. It's part of the divinity that is within us, is the fact that we can we can have things that happen to us, and we can stop and we can choose, and that choice creates there there's there's a really um divine thing there that gives us the ability to choose our our reactions and choose how we handle things and that's a that's a form of creation that is that is i think oftentimes over um under undervalued and underlooked and i'm sorry i put my glasses back on i'm 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 tearing up because of the smoke i'm (laughs) crying it's been a it's been a touching conversation but not that touching not that touching that's fine um yeah i i don't know it all Everything's interconnected, and it, so you start thinking about it, it's kind of crazy. So, I gotta move this chair because oh, well, we can well, we can make some space. I don't want to take you away from the fire because the oh, fire is you're fine. I'm mostly insulated. <sighs> <laughs> but I I absolutely love this topic of agency. I'm uh, it's 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 one of those things that it makes so much sense on a on a deep. Um, a core level of who we are, mm-hmm. and it not only that, but it's also so empowering. It's so empowering to know that you get to choose. Yes, and that's at the core of my, I don't know, my issues I take with the government. It's that's that's where it is. Is I like you don't get to take my agency away. That's that's very much a place I draw the line. And so, I don't... That's the... <laughs> so, the, the, we'll have... That's the thing that's been really... Um, especially, like, in the church... And I'll just share my opinion. I don't. You don't have to share what your thoughts are. But the... the I very much... I, I have the, this core testimony of the church and of the of the gospel that has been given to me, I view as divine. I cannot deny the things that I feel I know. Mm -hmm. Um, When leadership in the church use things like COVID or things like this to, they they give us um, instructions. There's the story of, I I wanna say, so I've listened to Truman G. Manchin's lectures on um, the different uh, prophets, uh, Latter-day prophets. Okay. And I want to say it was Joseph Fielding Smith, but I don't remember exactly who. I, I could be wrong on that. There was one one of the one of the histories of the, one of the prophets who he went to. Um, he he ended up serving in Hawaii on a mission. Anyways, there was a story where he, he um, it was either him or one of his companions. They they were getting off the the boat and they had to go on this dinghy to the island, okay. and they. Um, what happened was it was in the middle of a storm and this guy was terrified and and he's like the 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 guy that was the prophet i think it was um was like you you need to get off the boat i'm telling you you have to get off he's like no i'm not going to do it and he's like i'm commanding you to get off and the guy's like if you command me in the name of god i'll do it otherwise no (laughs) And, and and he's like okay i command you in the name of god to do this and he commanded him in the name of god and the guy gets he gets on the little dinghy and he goes and it capsizes and he sinks uh, it capsizes and he sinks and he drowns like literally he 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 drowns and they, uh, one of the locals grabs and pulls him out and and then they um, they do it was before uh, CPR was a thing 
and they do um, they they he's inspired to do something similar to CPR and then they give him a blessing and I don't know if he resuscitated him or he blessed him and brought him back to life one or the other but he the guy lives mm -hmm. and it's 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 very interesting I have this very attitude that I when when command is given that is one of those things where people use your faith to control your agency and it's something that I take sacred it's like okay I, I, I'm, I have no problem following commands of the Lord because I want to follow God yeah. I absolutely want to follow God but I also have no problem making it clear to bishops or state presidents or whatever like okay if, if this is from God and you're commanding me commanding this, if you're telling me to do this as a function of your your role okay but if you're not, but if you're not, then the responsibility lies with you. Yes, and 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 and, <laughs> and you you realize that I will I will stand before the judgment bar of God, and I will testify of your actions, just the same as I expect you to do the same for me. And and it's like I I have no I have no malicious desire to not follow what God wants us to do. But I also see the things, the evils that are going on in our world, and when when the men that are supposed to lead us don't stand up against them, I also I, I, I'm also leery of that, and it's not absolutely. <laughs> you know, I have a healthy distrust for authority. In most general. of the things in the world mm -hmm. that are put out as you should do this yeah. before I say, okay, I say, why? And and if it's because God commanded me, then all right, let's I'm, go. I'm done. Like that, that's that's good enough. For if me. it's because, well, because you should. Well, why? And if you can't give me a good, logical, reasonable answer for that, that's not because someone said so, then I'm not going to listen. <laughs> that's where that... I and that does, to me, I don't care who you are. That's... It, it, it doesn't matter what your position is. If you're mm -hmm. the mayor, mm -hmm. the governor, <laughs> the president, mm -hmm. whoever, I don't care. If it's wrong, it's wrong. <laughs> and if it's from God, it's from God. <laughs> but somebody's going to have to answer for that. Yeah. And that's the thing is like, I, I fully believe that God works through prophets and through men so that he can be more merciful to us when we screw up. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a very beautiful thing that God does. And I think it, he does it specifically to help us because we're, we're stupid. You know, we're, 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 we're stupid in a lot of different senses. And it's just, it's such a beautiful thing that I, that, that gives me hope as far as like, okay, this, this, there's bad things going on, but it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's going to be okay, but also I've, with that, there are worse things than death. Yeah. Like if, even if it's not okay and you don't make it out alive, there's worse things than death. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in this world that are, that, that, that cannot um, accept that in their head or can't reconcile can't, that idea. Can't reconcile that idea that, that like, I mean, by no means do I want to die. Mm -hmm. But if that happens tomorrow, I, I trust that there's a reason for that and that God is in control. <laughs> and it's, <laughs> It's a hard thing for people to swallow when they when they hear someone say, "But, but, but, but what?" Well, that, that's <laughs> the thing is, if we actually believe that Christ overcame death through the resurrection, we know that that battle that battle's already won. Yeah, it's, it's a, part of the progression. Yeah, and I mean, I don't have a death wish, mm -hmm. but I'm not. But you also have faith; it's not the end. I'm. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not like terrified of the thought <laughs> yeah and so but it goes back to that that, that god's in control and if god's saying you saying it's time to do something it's time to do something and eventually he's gonna say hey it's it's time to move on and that's not my call to make yeah so. do you think it's dark enough we should take this flag down i don't know the procedures and all that not much of a procedures kind of person <laughs> <laughs> what do you think dog are you getting cold what do you think Roxy 
Is that about enough for one day, or is there more stuff we need to go over? For all these nice people at home that are watching this. Hopefully from the comfort of their couch where it's not cold. <laughs> I think the only other thing I'd say is like, how do you, um, how how would you show, how would you help people to realize that uh, the Constitution really is important enough to to hold to, to to protect? Well, maybe this is me being a little bit of a history nerd, mm -hmm. but. What brought about the Constitution? You mean the the crown being uh, malicious and effectively, yeah. yeah. I mean the the series of events, be what they may. I'm a bit of a history nerd. I can't tell you line for line. This happened, and this happened, and this happened, and this happened. I I can't tell you that. Mm. There was a tyrannical government, and the people said no. And so what's happening in our lives now that we need to just say no those are the things that should be driving you to protect the constitution because the constitution was built to protect those things and so it's i don't know it's almost a chicken egg conundrum of the constitution exists but the constitution exists because these things but then it's to prevent those things and it's just and you know i don't know a ton of the i'm, I'm not i'm not i feel like i'm uh i'm very at the beginning of history of learning history and stuff but i'm thinking of like the magna carta and the stuff that i've learned about england mm -hmm. before the before even the the settlers came before the colonies mm -hmm. england really was we think of the king and like oh you think of like oh he's the king you know get he all all powerful and that's not exactly how it was no. england was very much like a first of their peers almost there was a parliament and um i guess to me the the government the king became tyrannical mm -hmm. and therefore the constitution was created so like the Constitution is a result of a, a situation. Yeah. And I, I would hope that we, as the intelligent beings that we are, I mean, God gave us a brain, mm -hmm. we should use it. <laughs> we should be able to figure that out and do something about it before it comes down to having... I mean, we call it the Revolutionary War, but had we not won, it would have been a civil war. So yeah. before that happens, let you know. Let's take the action to to get ahead of that. <laughs> the thing that uh, that it makes me think of though is like one of the reasons why it happened here in the in the states, and it didn't happen in England is because the king, because he was so far removed from the the um, backlash, mm -hmm. he had more leeway to be tyrannical because the people didn't have as clear of ways to to fight against it well what's happening right now how do you fight against the government exactly that's 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 the point With, was, without exactly ending up in saying. jail without being that random crazy guy like i just want to be left alone and raise my family with correct principles as god wants me to mm -hmm. like i don't want to have to say no, that's not right, government. Stop doing that. <laughs> but I think that we're eventually going to have to get to that point. And I think maybe we are at that point where we need to get on paper and say, look, X, Y, and Z is happening. That's unacceptable. Here's why. Stop doing that. And so it comes down to standing for what's right. Don't be a fence sitter. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Not many things I dislike more than fence sitters. And I try very hard not to be one, but it's hard. <laughs> well, that's the thing. Is like, I, I remember one of the books I read with about George Washington, and it talked about him. It went through a lot of his history, but it talked about him in while he was the president. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he did is, especially, I think it was with, uh, was it Madison and Jefferson that really didn't get along. They, 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 ideologically, they had they came from different angles, and um, 
uh, Washington, uh, the president, what he would do was he would get information and get information and get information, and he'd get it from all these different sources mm -hmm. until the obvious answer became the answer that was right became obvious. And it's like that's, that's there's a difference between this and then being a fence sitter and someone who just doesn't want to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And it's like you, you're you're a fence sitter until you understand what's right and what's wrong, and then if you're continuing to be a fence sitter, you're a coward. Yeah. And that's that's why that I guess that's one of the one of the motivating factors in us doing this is to help people to realize no these things are going on and they're wrong, mm -hmm. and to help people to stop being fence sitters in that sense. Yeah. I like that. Well, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, is there anything that you, any initiatives or things that you're trying to do that you're trying to, that we could support her at all? I don't think so. I think, I mean, the things that you guys are trying to do line up in a, um, what's the opposite of uh, random, not random, coincidence. Order. It's the opposite of coincidence. Like the things that you guys are talking about and covering are deliberate. Are very, yeah. They're 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 the things I care about. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I have my hobbies, but like the things that that you know would keep me awake at night or that I that I care about and want to see change to make the world better for my children mm -hmm. are the things that you guys talk about. Well, good. And so, I mean. My particular angle on it always seems to come back to agency for some reason, and it can be applied to everything you're you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I'm I'm no constitutional scholar. <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> that I, is for sure. Honestly, I've I've I'm neither Mitch nor I would claim that we're constitutional scholars. I know Mitch has studied a lot more than I have, mm -hmm. but the concepts are there are eternal principles. I think mm -hmm. like, like what you mentioned. And so it's it's whether you understand the Constitution or not, when you when you hear truth, it rings true. Yes. And so that to me, like when you hear something true and it speaks to your speaks to your soul, like those those are those universal truths of you hear it and and you you know that's true, that's good, that's right. They're self evident. And so anyway, yeah, that's about it. Well, Thanks, this is Elders Rising, episode something, 22. Um, if you, so the way that um, we met Miles, again, Mitch do him from a little bit, uh, but he he's posted on our Facebook page. He's done some, uh, that, that, that's that's how I first got to know him, with some of the stuff that he's posted that I thought was a very good, uh, good value. So, appreciate that. I don't know, I'm plugging the Facebook page now. Like, smash, whatever. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody. Do good things. <laughs>